have an amazing, amazing hang for you guys today. Um, thank you to all the fans that jump on. If this is your first time hanging with us, I'm going to kind of explain how it's all going to work. Then we're going to bring in all the players and we're going to make this super interactive and super fun for you guys. Okay. So first of all, um, in the chat, I want you to put where you're from. We want to know where you're from. We, we want to make sure that we're staying engaged with you guys. Thank you guys for logging on. Hey, Anna, I see you. Um, somebody said a little help with the volume button. The volume button should be kind of next to your um, your mute and your turn off button, which is under the screen, uh, under your boxes, depending on how you have your setup. Boston's in the house. Dallas is in the house. Orange County, Colorado Springs. All right, so this is how it's going to work, you guys. Today is all about you. That's what Hang is all about. It's where you get to jump on and interact with some of your favorite players. We're talking NBA N and NCAA legends. They're going to be on today. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for you to be able to ask questions and engage with them all while watching the NCAA finals. All right. Um, it is tip off time. Of course, as you guys know, we got the North Carolina Tar Heels taking on the number one seed, Kansas. So keep your mics muted, but if you have a question, just put it in the chat. I'll ask you to unmute. You'll get to ask your question to whoever you want to ask your question to, and then we'll jump off. This is a very positive environment, family friendly, and we're all just one big happy family right here at Hang, all right? So I'm going to introduce to you guys, I'm sure the guys, fellas, have already been waiting on me. We have the legend, Bill Walton, you guys. He is hanging with us today, NBA Hall of Famer, played at UCLA. I, like, I'm almost at a loss for words that he's actually hanging with us today. This is amazing. So Bill Walton is in the building. Also, we have Kyle Guy from the Miami Heat. You know, he was Virginia's national championship hero in 2019. We got to talk to him. Jared Butler's in the building, led Baylor to the win 2020. Scotty Thurman's here from the Arkansas Razorbacks. Clarence Rupert's in the building. Matthew Lee, cannot wait to talk to these two fellas from the Cinderella team. Kudos to them. Um, also, Monique Billings, she's going to be joining us for halftime later on. And we, of course, we have the legendary, one of the greatest of all times, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, that'll also be jumping on. So are any of the players on live already? This is a new setup for me too, guys. So I'm trying to figure out how to see everybody at the same time. So as you guys are figuring it out, I'm figuring it out too, okay? So, hey, Samantha. Hey, Tyler. I see you guys. What's up? What's up? Hey, Anthony. What's up, Tommy? I see Sanja's in the building. Ryan. There's Scotty. There's Jared. What's up, guys? Hello. Hey, what's up? What's up? How we doing? Lady Jade, how you doing? I'm doing great, Bill. Okay, we got to start with predictions. I'm going to get a prediction from you. We'll go to Scotty. We'll go to Jared. Who's taking home the ring today? My brain says Kansas. Every metric that I've looked at tells me Kansas, with the exception of the fact that they played fantastic basketball on Saturday night in a game that was never in doubt. They cruised to victory over Villanova. <clears throat> Usually, the team that plays great on Saturday night does not play that well on Monday night. My concern for Kansas is that they may be a little overconfident because they have so many things going in their favor. My heart tells me North Carolina because I always love underdogs. I do not have a stake in this game. I know everybody in the game. The coaches are fantastic. The schools are fantastic. The communities, the culture, the identity, the styles, it's all fantastic. But I like underdogs in games like this. I like underdogs unless I'm playing. And then there's a situation where the injury to Armando Baycott is critical. We have to keep an eye on him. We'll know early on whether he can run, but we're going to not be able to tell how long he can run. And so that's going to just put incredible pressure on the scorers, Caleb Love, R.J. Davis. I'm a big Jamba Juice guy, right? And so when I see Caleb Good Love, one. I think of my favorite Jamba Juice. Good one. Butter love. And so he's absolutely remarkable. He's been on fire. RJ Davis is very capable of going off. And then we're going to see how good 
Brady Manick is because Brady Manick has been playing well. <clears throat> the only game he didn't play well was against UCLA. And UCLA, they just stayed at home at him. They never left him alone. And and then, and the Bruins paid dearly for that because chocolate peanut butter love, he went nuts. And he just absolutely took it to the Bruins. And now they're all here right now. So intellectually, <laughs> mental acuity, Kansas, emotionally, heart and soul, North Carolina. Well, we got to get uh, Jared's prediction because during uh, part of what you were saying, Jared was shaking his head as if he was disagreeing. Come on, Jared. What's up? Who would you No, I, I, I was just shaking my head because be, me coming from a person who played in this game a year ago um, and won it, um, I mean, we played well the, the day before, the two days before, and then we played well again the, the championship game. So that's my only disagreement I have with Bill. But um, um, for me – uh, North Carolina beat my Baylor Bears, and uh, I can't root for them in the championship game, so I'm going to the Big 12, and uh, that's what I got. I think Bill Self has done a great job. Ochai Jabaji is, is amazing, um, so I'm going Kansas. I, I hate to say it, but, I mean, I just I, I just got to say it. Okay. So, Jared, I didn't even know you were in the locker room here, man, so congratulations, and now you're with the Utah Jazz, yeah. and your team a year ago. Look. If any one of these teams tonight plays like your team did last year, but you know that's very, very difficult. You guys had everything going for you. You were healthy. You were strong. You had a brilliant coach. And every single one of your guys was committed to their role. You lived a life of sacrifice, discipline, and honor. And you guys on the backcourt and the front perimeter, you did the scoring, and the big guys were just absolutely yeah. incredible. It was as great a display of team basketball as I've seen in years. And I hold you guys up as a banner, as a beacon of hope, of example, of inspiration, of light. And if any one of these teams tonight plays like you guys played last year, they're going to win. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Yep. And, um, yeah. I love Baylor basketball. Yeah, I do yeah. too. So I love it. <laughs> and, and that game, Baylor, North Carolina this year, what are you eating, man? Come on, we're on television here. What are I'm you hungry. doing? It's my, it's my dinner time. <laughs> In your, what about your pregame meal, man? you got to be ready. Let's go. So uh, in that North Carolina-Baylor game, North Carolina, they looked like they, oh, we're underway here. Oh, my gosh, Baycott's in the starting lineup. He's going right away. No, wild shot here. Beautiful play by Christian Brown. He's a very good player, man. You must have played against him. You must have played against all these Kansas. Yeah, guys, I played. Right? I played against all these. Um, all the, the whole starting five for Kansas for sure. Yeah, more than one. Now, so so compare and contrast Bill Self with Scott Drew. <laughs> Two totally different um, coaches for sure. I mean, I don't know Bill Self that well, but just from stories that I heard and um, the way guys you know interact with him and how tough he is on his players. Because Drew is like just a energetic guy, energy all day. Um, super positive guy, and I think Bill Self is like on more on the chill, like aggressive type side. But um, I think they're both phenomenal coaches, though. At the end of the day, <laughs> how's Corliss doing? And Scotty, what are you doing these days? He's doing well. I'm actually the head high school basketball coach here at Parkview High School. In what city? What state? L Little Rock, Arkansas. Little Rock. Wow, I've been there. That's a beautiful place. Isn't that where Derek Fisher's from? Yes, it's where he went to high school as well. The same high school you're coaching at now? Correct. Wow, this is a 7 nothing game. Are you calling this game over already? <laughs> no. Okay, thank you. Send it back. David McCormick, what a block. Akeem Olajuwon, Bill Russell. Underneath, ball movement. Woo! All right, let's see. If you guys have questions, again, we have Bill for about 30 minutes on with us. This is your opportunity to ask your questions. I mean, ask me anything. The let's, talk some, let's talk some trash here. Let's talk some championships. Send it back, David McCormick. Wow, where's this guy been his whole career? <laughs> <laughs> the way he's playing right now, he's playing like Kareem. He's playing like Elvin Hayes. So before the game here tonight in, in, at New Orleans, uh, it was – yeah, Brady Manic, here we go. You know, they're going to name a band Brady Manic, the same way that Pearl Jam named themselves Mookie, <laughs> Mookie Blaylock at the beginning. Man. And we're going to soon be joined by Kareem. Oh, my gosh. And I had lunch today 
with Bob Pettit at his house, one of the foundational pillars in the sport of basketball. LSU, two-time SEC. Oh, we got an injury on the court. Hold on a second. Oh, my gosh. He's down. Brady Manning. Hubert Davis pacing those sidelines, man. This is, this is critical here. They're getting banged up. So one of the things that happens, David McCormick, goodness gracious, playing like Elvin Hayes out there in Akeem Olajuwon. If I can only get these earbuds to fit me. I think these, I think they're. Yeah, my man Grant, who's like the coolest dude ever here. Okay. Yeah, I always like it. You know, I prefer it when Lori, my wife, the greatest thing ever, you know, the greatest human being ever, greatest everything ever. I prefer it when she's playing with my ears as opposed to this dude, Grant. <laughs> uh, Grant is very cool, but uh, Lori, Lori, <laughs> she's awesome. Man. I love it. Jackson, you had a question? Jackson McGuire? Yeah, my question Hello, was. Oh, Jackson. Uh, yeah, how you Jackson. doing? Uh, oh, my question was, who's the hardest player you had to guard? Well, Kareem was the best by far. But Artis Gilmore, that guy, he was tough. Artis was like the strongest dude ever, 7'2", 300, 400, 500 pounds. I mean, how could you tell? Back him up on the truck scales, right? And so, but, you know, the challenge for Artis, Garden Artis, was that Artis, he had no comprehension that there were rules. Rules like three seconds, double dribble, offensive fouls, <laughs> traveling, left-handed, just powerful as can be. And uh, but yeah, you know, he was he was an incredible challenge to play against. But but Kareem was the best. You know, Larry Bird was the greatest player I ever played with. Kareem was the greatest player I ever played against. Artis Gilmore was tough as can be. We played against them all. A, a lot of the really great players we played against them early on in their careers. Uh, Akeem Olajuwon, man, turn your phone off, please. You're killing me right. here. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, just tell him I'll call him back later, okay? Yeah, it was my and dad. So, he probably doesn't okay. want to go with Bill Walton right now. So, <laughs> so we played against Akeem very early in his career. We played against Michael Jordan very early in his career. But uh, you know, so many great ones out there: Bill Russell, Wilt. Oscar, Kareem, Larry, Magic, Michael, LeBron's at this level of excellence right now. In the game today, my favorite players to watch at the very top, and there's so many good ones, but uh, LeBron, in no order, LeBron, KD, Giannis, and Steph Curry. And uh, sadly, a couple of those guys are injured right now. Uh, you know, Steph and LeBron are hurt right now. NBA playoffs just on the horizon. But, you know, we're going to be doing this again during the NBA finals. So uh, we'll have all those questions there. Thanks a lot. Did that answer your question? Great hanging with you. Your name is Jackson McGuire, right? Yes, sir. You look really cool. What's that banner in the background, man? Oh, it's a it's a back to back World War Champs flag. Oh yeah. Okay, I got that. I get it now. But yeah. now, now, who's the very nice banner in oh, the background? You, you know Borat, the guy. Um, yeah, I know Borat. Yeah, Borat's like a, my hero. Borat yeah. and Snoop Dogg. It's yeah. just a, it's just a Borat, very nice flag. Oh, okay. So yeah, you're skyrocket, you're skyrocketing on the list there, Jackson. Thank you, thank you. All right, All Ryan right. McHugh, it's your turn to ask your question. And by the way, you guys heard Bill mention that he's going to be hanging with us for the NBA Finals on June the second. It is already determined. You see how great Bill is. He is a ball of fun. So guess what? Now that you're on live, you can actually go lock in your spot before it goes public okay so you can lock in your spot for the nba finals get a chance to hang with bill again um for so, the so lady jade yes. lady jade yes. this hang deal is like the coolest thing ever because oh we you see i'm a people person you know i don't sit there and like figure out like free throw percentage make a shot i don't get there and figure out like strategy strategy is make a shot guard somebody and get a rebound and win the game, right? right? My deal is being with the fans. I love the fans. And I've been spending all week. You know, the, the pandemic just absolutely killed me oh. you know, because the live events that are the just the, the, the blood of, of, of my life's existence here, but now we're back and with technology and with hang, we get to do all the things that we love. What's the next question there, Jay? Lady Absolutely. Jay, Ryan McHugh, it's on you. Ryan McHugh, go ahead and unmute your mic. That sounds like a Bob Dylan rhyme. 
Ryan McHugh, <laughs> it's on you. One, two, back to the groove. Ryan, what do you got? All right, Ryan, you got three seconds to jump on, Ryan. You got to hurry up and unmute your mic because we have tons more questions. <laughs> okay. Three, right. two, one. Okay. Uh, he had All his right. chance. Bill, Bill, unmute your mic. Bill, it's on you. My, my, my mic is unmuted. <laughs> oh, not you, Bill. Bill, I don't want to mispronounce your last name. V O G T. Vote. Best Vote. of all time. Yes. Hello, Here. Bill. Here we go. Okay. All How right. about Liz? How about Liz? Liz, go ahead or and jump Jake. on. Or John. <laughs> Let's let this rock here. Hey, Bill. Hello. It's, Who's this? It's Liz. It's Liz. How are you? How are you, Liz? I am wonderful, thank you. Always I have a great question. to see you. Sure. <laughs> you too. A I have a question for you. What? Yeah. Tell us three things about you that that we don't know that we should know. Well, th there's nothing because I share everything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not into hoarding and I'm not into selfishness. I'm into being a part of a team and to be on the hang team is fantastic. I will tell you Good. that Lori, Lori, my wife is just the greatest everything ever. And she's also our CEO, the chief Good. everything officer. We have six children and 14 grandchildren. Yeah, Lori's awesome. parents who are 99 and 93, they live with us at our family home in San Diego. And so I love, I love the things that, that, you know, I'm a lifelong stutterer. I could not say a word until I was 28 years old. I've spent half my adult life in the hospital with all the orthopedic injuries that I've had. I love a lot of things. I'm not, you know, all, all you young people out there, your whole life has been defined by a media trend that has to rank rate and compare everything. That's not my world. I enjoy everything. I like to say yes. I live a life of curiosity, exploration, experimentation. I'm a deadhead. I love Bob Dylan and Neil Young and and, uh, and John Fogarty and Jackson Brown and Jimmy Cliff and the Rolling Stones and Bruce Springsteen and just an endless list of music. I also love country music. I love to read. I love to watch movies on the airplanes. And I love to play the piano. And I love to play the drums. I This plan out here... The band that was did the anthem, which was Preservation Hall, their local band here, New Orleans. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely incredible. And being here in New Orleans, New Orleans looks great right now. Uh, we, we had this yeah. remarkable event yesterday celebrating the wonders of college basketball this year. And Jim Nance received an award and honor. And, oh, look at this. North Carolina's coming back here. It's starting to happen. We got a game here. And this is a good sign for the Tar Heel fans. Caleb Love, chocolate peanut butter. No, man, it goes to the line. Sorry. So we had this remarkable event yesterday, and all these different people were honored. Walker Kessler was Defensive Player of the Year, and Ed Cooley from Providence Coach of the Year, Oscar Shibway from Kentucky. I had my picture made with all of them. Lori keeps a slideshow that I put on during my corporate presentations and everything. And then Beth Bass, honored from the women's side of the sport, and then – Jim Nance. And Jim Nance gave as great a speech as I've ever heard. Off the cuff, off the top of his head, no notes, perfect, flawless delivery. It just had everybody in tears and it was just absolutely incredible. And so, did I say I like to play chess too? I play a lot of chess and I love to read and I'm reading a fantastic book right now called, I'm going to give you the English pronunciation. I'm reading it in English. Mi Espanol es muy malo. I'm reading The Third Country by Michael Malone. And it's about the history of San Diego, my hometown, and Tijuana, the, the border yeah. town of northwestern Mexico. And, and all, the, all the greatness that goes on between two completely different countries, two completely different cities, but are now working together to make the world a better tomorrow. And that's yeah. one of the reasons why I love and admire Kareem so much, who's going to be coming on, because Kareem spends every day of his life in every way, trying to make the world a better place. Amen. My motto in life, be better, do better, do more. Now, what was your question again, Liz? I forget. Yeah, you're good. You covered it. Thank you for hanging with us and, and giving okay. us a chance to get to know you more. Jay, I love, I love somebody else. There's a lot of questions. Hey, no Bruce, way. We, really? have, we have a couple of amazing, outstanding players that have joined us. Who do we got? From St. Peter's. 
we have Clarence Rupert and Matthew Lee. First of all, we got to clap it up for you guys because you all did something that was outstanding and amazing. You deserve Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was watching those games, man. I'm so happy for you guys. I'm so proud of you. Here, here, let me get John Calipari on the phone. He's got a few things to say to you guys. Man, so, I'm, I'm sure, I'm so sure he doesn't want to talk to us anytime soon. He, he wants to sign you guys up in the transfer portal or, or, the, Tinder, <laughs> or the Tinder portal that I call it. But, uh, you know, oh, man. Deal. So, so you guys do what everybody dreams about in life and that's beating the big guys and look at this north carolina out in front yeah here we go yeah. and remy mark bring the jayhawks back rock chalk jayhawk whatever the heck that is i don't know <laughs> <laughs> oh brady manic mookie blaylock pearl jam preservation hall ryan Br christian brown now that's mm. a move right there man mm. So you guys have such a good team, and your coach was fantastic. Tell us what it was like going through that remarkable run. I, I mean, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was it was amazing. Uh, you know, obviously not not too many expect, uh, people expected that much out of us, but but we we. Knew I we, had you all the way. I had you all the way. <laughs> well, I I appreciate that. Not not it wasn't too many people like yourself. I love peacocks. <laughs> I love colors. <laughs> I love rainbows. Rainbow is my favorite color. Rainbow is my favorite flavor. And now peacocks are my favorite bird. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Other than, other than Larry Bird. So what's <laughs> next? So what's next for you guys? Um well, uh, well right now, um, uh, since our old head coach, uh, you know he's at St. Hall now. So yeah, now we're just looking for, Yeah, and so now we're just looking for a new head coach, you know, get back to work. Are you guys going to Seton Hall, or are you guys going to Kentucky? <laughs> As of right now, we we staying at St. Peter's. Right? Yeah, we staying at St. Peter's. We're not going nowhere. So all okay, my so friends, Bill, we, Bill, we have a surprise for you, Matthew. You have a picture um, that you want to share, right? This is the first time you met Bill. Uh, this, yeah. I, I don't, I don't have it with me printed out. Uh, I, cu I couldn't get to a printer. But I do have a picture with, with Mr. Walton when I was, I think I might have been like two years old. I think I have it. Look. Oh, yeah. That, there you go. It's kind of messed up. My printer was tripping. But yeah, that's him. Yeah. That's that's me. Oh, my God. And that's <laughs> that's, that's Matthew Lee, right? Yeah. That's yeah, that's him. That's I thought. That's wow. him. Matthew, you look different. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, just a look, just a little bit. You, so you Matthew, grew up. You look fantastic. How, how did you end up? Taking a picture with Bill Walton as a child. Well, that that was twenty years ago now, so I'm 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 not sure how, how exactly it happened, but my father briskly he played for the Lakers and won a championship with them. Uh, somehow he well he, he first of all he talks about you all the time, Mr. Walton. Uh, he says how Bill I'm great Bill's my name, please, Mr. <laughs> Walton's not part of his show. Uh, Bill, uh, he he talks about how how great of a player you was, and and obviously uh, I, I had the opportunity to take a picture with you, so I think he just threw. Threw me on your lap and then he just took a picture real quick. So your dad's one of the coolest dudes ever. And he's that. younger than I am. Most everybody is younger than me. Kareem <laughs> is older than me. Kareem saying <laughs> Elvin Hayes, who I was with, Bob Pettit, they're older than me, right? <laughs> I was with them all, all the time. And so your dad, Butch, they played for Marquette. And yep. Marquette was coached by Al McGuire. Now, when you look at the champions, the champions who retired at the very end, and we can only think of four. I've been doing research. You had Bill Russell, you had John Wooden, and Al McGuire retired after the 77 championship, which your dad played on. Yep. And then you've got Peyton Manning, the football star. I can't, if anybody else can think of somebody who belongs on that list, but your dad played on that Marquette team, and I was very close to Al McGuire. His brother, Dick, and I were in the same Basketball Hall of Fame class, and Al McGuire is a fantastic player player, coach, broadcaster, human being. And then your dad had the privilege, but also the greatest teammate I ever had was Maurice Lucas, who mm -hmm. was a player for Al McGuire. And so over the course of the years between Dick Enberg and Maurice Lucas and Al McGuire and Milwaukee, Kareem and Oscar and Lucius and Bobby Dandridge and Connie Warner and Hubie Brown and Larry Costello all being part of that Milwaukee team, 
where Marquette is, just fantastic synergies, the same synergies we have going on here. And when I see a picture like that, it just makes me so happy. It makes me so proud. And to see how you guys have come along as a proud parent, myself as a lucky parent, it's just absolutely wonderful. And how's your dad doing, Butch? He, he, he's doing he's doing great. He's doing absolutely great. And is he hanging? He's yeah. hanging. Is he, in the, is, is he in the show here tonight? No, no, he, he's not. He's not in the show here tonight. Oh, man. So now I know when I was in college, I spent all my time in the library or in church. And uh, is that where you guys are right now? <laughs> Uh, no, I, I'm I'm in my room, but I like to spend most yeah, of my we, time here in my room or, or getting some yeah. stuff up in the gym. Okay, yeah. so now I'm, I'm looking at this room, and I see a room with just white walls. Is this some <laughs> sort of padded? Is this a padded cell or something that you're in? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's just it's just a regular basic room, you know. I, I well, yeah, it's a regular room. Too much. You don't have pictures of Borat or Snoop Dogg or anybody like that on the walls? What's uh, up on that? Uh, nah, nah. Cl Clarence has got his pictures. Yeah, he, he's got a lot of white on those walls too, man. So <laughs> one of the oh, one yeah, of the reasons that, I like. Sorry, so one Joe, of the yeah, reasons you, I, Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. One of the reasons, Lady Jade, that I like to wear tie dye so much is that, you know. When I eat lunch or dinner and I spill all my food all over my shirt, nobody can tell. And so, <laughs> our, our, you know, Lori has fixed up our house and it, it's been, it's, it's, it's a very cool place. We're going to have to have one of these hang parties from our house there. And, uh, yeah. And, and, and we'll do it. At, uh, at, uh, and then we'll give some sort of tour and we'll, and we'll have a good time. But, uh, I, I guarantee you. Uh, Matthew and Clarence, you come on that hang too. We don't have a single bit of white wall in our house. There are no white walls in our house. Well, Phil, I'll say this: Todd, I fit you. You have the best spirit and personality that I mean. I just I cannot even I can't brag on you enough. We have a couple of more players that just jumped on. Bill, you are bringing out all of the heavy hitters. Okay, that's all I can say. Raymond Felton. Is here with wow. us. Oh my USC God! Mario and Kyle Guy with the Miami Heat is on with us. You know he played for Virginia. He is. They have just jumped on and joined us as well. Guys, I know those guys, guys, and I have seen them play in their championship games, and they are fantastic. I've seen them play in the NBA, and Kyle Guy. Kyle, I was there when you made those free throws, and so many people wanted you to miss those free throws. And you stood up, you stood up there, and you looked like Rick Barry shooting overhand. You looked like you were going to make a hundred in a row before you missed. You're a great champion, and I appreciate all you did for our son Luke, who was your coach at Sacramento for a while. Yeah. And he just raved about you, not only as a player, because we're all huge Tony Bennett fans, we're huge UVA fans. Ralph Sampson, one of the great ones, Rick Carlisle, one of the great ones, and now Kyle Guy. And here I am with Raymond Raymond Felton, right, and Kyle Guy, champions. Yeah, great to be hanging with you guys. How you doing? Good, man. I appreciate you, man. I really enjoyed my time with uh, with Luke, man. He's a great coach. Yeah, look, looks like you're enjoying your time right now. There we oh, go. Yeah. You, you blew it man. out. You blew it out. You got your charge on there. What's that shirt say? I don't know. I yeah, got charge. Charge. Yeah. Really with them, so. I'm all for charging myself. Yeah. There let's you go. charge. Let's charge <laughs> forward. Uh, yeah, he's he's doing so, great right now. So I can't believe these guys who you know who teach you to take a charge. Our, our, our coaches, no. our, our coaches that never yeah. take a charge, man. Get in the air and block a shot. Let's go. He was go. saying like he was playing again or like quit running underneath the people. player to play again. He said artist Gilmore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and he wasn't the best. Yeah. That guy was too for you and St. Peter's players. Bad. Hey Jordan, can you boot your mic for me? Jordan Klein. <laughs> Jordan Klein. There we go. Um, Bill, yeah. we have a question for you and the St. Peter's players from Tyler. Tyler Magarlis, if you could, uh, Margolis, if you could unmute your mic. Hey, Tyler. Hello. Hi. You can ask your question. Yeah. The future. Yes. Brand Jordan. Yeah. Jump man. Just go. That's a cool bunk bed you got there. Okay. How old are you? About 19, 20? <laughs> 12. 12? No way. You're cool. You don't have any white walls there, man. You're not in the padded <laughs> cell. Uh, what so do you got there? My first question is for you. 
What's like the favorite? What's your favorite team that you played on? Could be like college, high school, and okay. NBA. What was my favorite team? Wherever we won the championship. <laughs> I pl <laughs> I played to win, and I love to win, and I love to be a part of the team. I'm a team guy. I'm not about individual stuff. I'm about team success. When you win, there's something in it for everybody. When you lose, there's nothing for anybody. Yeah. And, so, and also, I don't live in a world where I rank, rate, or compare things, particularly coaches, championships, children, concerts or congratulations just enjoy them all and get to that championship parade man that's where it rocks look at this game tied at 18 here eight and a half minutes to go in the first half love to be hanging with all you guys way to go tyler that's a beautiful room now do you keep that as clean as it is or or did your mom come in there and help you oh it's not vacuum right now because everything's on the floor out the camera Oh, you just threw it on the floor now. There's a cool dude there. Pull your pull your hoodie down so I can see what you look like. What a handsome dude. Why would you ever want to cover up that face, man? What happened to your finger? Oh, did you, uh, I did you punch the, somebody? I the... Did you punch somebody? No. Who's your That's... favorite team? Who's your favorite team, Tyler? NBA. Uh, College. 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 Yeah. Being from New Jersey, I love St. Peter's. St. Yeah. Peter's, okay. So you were defending the honor of St. Peter's, and you had to punch somebody to get to, <laughs> to make sure that this was all going to be cool, right? Way to go. I picked them for my bracket. Uh oh, you had, you had St. Peter's in your bracket? Yeah, so did I. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then but they played North Carolina, North Carolina's ahead right now. Yeah, I also have a question for St. Peter's first. Like, what was it like going through that, like, crazy – that crazy run, like, like not like not many people expecting you to go that far. Uh, what's going? What's going on? Uh, I, I appreciate you be, being a being a fan of St. Peter's. Uh, it, it was it was a crazy run. Obviously, a lot of people didn't expect us to, to go that far. Uh, but we we just we just had a lot of fun. You know, we 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 tried to take it one game at a time. But we we just tried to enjoy our, our, our time over there. And we came we came back. We we're still kind of enjoying all the fruits of our labor now. Yeah, um, I feel like it was a, a crazy experience, you know, uh, definitely for me, like my first year in college and then for me to go that far deep in the tournament, uh, it was it was a crazy like every every game we uh, we went by, you know, it was like I was looking I was looking at like the percents of us winning. And I could see it dropping and dropping every time we beat somebody. Mm -hmm. that though. And also, you think you could see a championship next year? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. The answer is never, yes. Never, never think never. St. Peter's, peacocks, yeah. <laughs> Preening, parading, flying, soaring. What? What? Have you ever seen, have you ever sang with the peacocks before? <laughs> Tyler, we're going to have you lead the championship parade. Backed up by Preservation Hall, the band that did the national anthem here at the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Tyler. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, right. Tyler. You guys, I have a $100 gift card I want to give to somebody, courtesy of Academy Sports and Outdoors. Now, the first person to answer the question correctly in the chat is going to get the gift card. Again, $100, um, which is a lot of money. Okay. Okay. So, Lady Jade. Why don't you let me ask the question? Oh, you know, I will let you okay. ask the question. That is, I okay. think that's, yes. Name the four players. There's four players in the history of basketball who have won multiple NCAA championships and multiple NBA championships. There's only four players in history that have done that. And uh, two of them are on this show today. Oh, <laughs> That was a good one, Bill. That was a good one. You're making them earn the hundred dollars. But all they have to do now is get two of them because I just I know gave. It. I know it. I know it. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you gotta, you gotta click. You put it in the chat, Jared. You can get the, you can get it too. Even the players can win. I know the answer. We're having these cool Capital One commercials with Charles and Samuel and Spike and Magic, Larry, 
And Sue, it's just fantastic. All right, let's see. This, okay, hold on. There's a lot of people that have already answered. Um, okay. Okay, okay I somebody. Think... Eric's got three of them. Rahul? No, Jared's, no, Jared's, got, uh, Jared's got three of them, but uh, no, Jared only has two of them. <laughs> yeah, okay, Calvin Fong. Calvin Fong, and that's the winner right there. The answer Calvin. is... Uh, the answer is Kareem, Bill Russell, Jamal Wilkes, and me. The only, Congratulations. Like, the only four players in history to be on multiple NCAA championships and multiple NBA championships. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Calvin. We're going to be sending you this $100 gift card courtesy of Academy Sports and Outdoors. And don't forget, there is a tile below where you can literally click and shop while you're hanging with us and get all of your collegiate gear at the Academy's fan shop. Academy, yeah, those folks are cool. They got everything you need. Now, Lady J, this guy Mike Francesca in the chat, yes. he had it right too. He had it right time. He had it right too. What well, was whoever had it first, Bill? <laughs> hey, Bill. Bill, the oh, most importantly. Bill, most importantly, I just want to let you know I'm a Helix Highlander as well. So go Helix Highlanders. I went to Helix. I yeah, know you did. Fantastic. So I'm yeah. Helix class of 1970, and I was 14 years old and a, and a sophomore at Helix, and uh, the NBA expanded to San Diego, and I had a key to the gym. And so all the Rockets from uh, Jim Barnett, Pat Riley, Don Coaches, John Block, Elvin Hayes, Rudy T., Calvin Murphy, Stu Lance, the coaches, Alex Hannum, Tex Winter, uh, Pete Newell, and Jack McMahon, we all just hung together. And for me to be able to have that experience as a 14-year-old, and that was an incredible springboard here to as a kid in North Carolina right now, man. They're playing ball. They're fighting. And, oh, that's a hard hit on Brady Manning. That guy's taking a beating out there. But I loved Helix, and that was a fantastic community. Mike, are you still there in the La Mesa community? No, I'm, I'm in Connecticut now, New York City, Connecticut. Oh, it's different there. Yeah. yeah. A little different. colder than San Diego. La Mesa, where we grew up. 80 degrees and a light breeze right. and perfect sunshine every day. Perfect. Chris, yeah. Christmas gets cold when it gets down to 68, 69, 70. That's when it gets really yeah. cold. San Diego there, yeah. Dreams <laughs> coming true. This is a heck of a game here, man. McCormick. Hey, Matt, so there is a guy named Ed Bo in the chat that says he's your father's best friend. And by the way, your dad is uh, watching right now. Butch Lee is on. He's watching you on live. Oh, so good. He, yeah, he can, he can hear Bill and everything, he, and he, he hears you guys. So he's, he's checking you out. He's watching you, Matt. He's watching you. <laughs> so, what's, going, what's going on, Ed Bo? What, what's up, Dad? <laughs> so, 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 Butch, Butch, so Al McGuire, who used to fight his own players, right? This guy was fierce and tough, and he, he loved to fight. Oh, nice steal, Abaji. Up the court, transition, Dewan Harris. What kind of player has he had? What kind of game has he had? Jalen Wilson. Can he make anything happen? Trying to go inside, a turnover, out of bounds, ball, tar heel. So Al McGuire used to fight all his players. And so when I teamed up with Maurice Lucas, who was a big bet, he was the toughest dude in the world, right? And so I asked Maurice, so did you did you and Al ever get in a fight? He said, "Yeah, but I." And I asked Maurice. I said, "Well, you would have killed him, right?" And I and and Maurice said, "Yeah, but we needed him, so I didn't kill him. I just beat him up a little bit." <laughs> and I and I let him live so we could win the games because we needed the coach. Great defense, Kansas. Dewan Harris, beautiful pass. Can't make a shot. What a follow by Wilson. That guy can play. I love Kansas basketball. I love speed, quickness, team, physical fitness, fundamentals, absolute full-out offensive attack. This is a ball game, yeah. Hey, Bill, I'm, I'm really excited that you're going to be hanging with us for the NBA Finals on June the 2nd. Yeah. Um, you are absolutely a ball of fun. There was something that you mentioned earlier. I know we're going to have Kareem jump, and you're going to have to get off in a few minutes, but we definitely yeah. want to connect with Kareem. He's going to be jumping on here in just a few minutes. You mentioned um, about something about being a great teammate. Yeah. What, what does it mean to be a great teammate? Um, you have these younger guys that are on here right now um, that are looking to probably achieve to the level that you achieve. 
So how can they become a great teammate? The strength of the team, Lady Jade, is the strength of the individual. And when you play for others, Brady Manic for three, yes, Carolina on fire. What a game. Timeout, Kansas. Rock Chalk Jayhawk. What is that anyway? Tar Heels. Is Michael Jordan here? Is James Worthy here? What a screen by Baycott. Oh, my gosh. What about Bob McAdoo? What about Billy Cunningham? North Carolina, four players on NBA 75. What a moment. What a game. They've got a chance. Wow, can they do it two games in a row? And they beat St. Peter's, too. So this is the people's team, North Carolina. And I'm so happy for Hubert Davis because there were a lot of people that did not want Hubert. There were a lot of people that did not want Hubert to be the coach. But the right people stood up, stood tall, and Hubert's got the chance, and he's doing a fantastic job. So to be a part of a team, that requires so much to live a life of service to other people. The nicest thing, Lady Jane, that anybody ever said about me as a basketball player. Now, you'll have to ask Lori offline what the nicest thing is about Bill because she'll have to really struggle to find something like that. But the nicest thing anybody ever said about me as a basketball player was that I helped my teammates play better ball. Bill Russell was my hero. The, all the great players, I mentioned them earlier. I also love Steve Nash. I love the guys who look to make the other guys the star. And yeah. growing up as a child, they have heroes like Bill Russell and then Muhammad Ali in the world of sports. And then in the social world context and, and, and issues and, 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 and the culture that we have and trying to have in a world as it can, could, and should be, uh, it was uh, Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy. And then the rock and roll music world, the country music legends and the heroes. And so I tried to play like Bill Russell, to win the game, started on defense, block the shot, get the rebound, push the ball up the court. And then when the guys missed, I would try to tip it in or get the shot, you know, get the rebound and get it back out for another shot. And so whatever I, whatever I could possibly do, I tried to do what others could not or would not do. I tried to be a leader. I tried to be a great teammate and a great friend, although I was tough. I was tough on my teammates and because I wanted to win. I had to win. And the coaches that I had, six of them who were in the Hall of Fame, the coaches, they demanded from the other players on the team that they subjugate their game, their dreams, their goals for me. Because the coaches made the decision early on that, okay, we're going to win this through Bill. And so I got the ball all the time. I got to play at my pace. I got to do what I wanted to do on the court. And my teammates helped me. You know, they, they had to pass me the ball. If they didn't pass me the ball, the coach said, you're coming out, man. <laughs> and so it, it was just, you know, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I played on some of the greatest teams ever. And I got to play against Kareem. Kareem was the standard of excellence then and still to this very day. And so to be a part of something special, like this hang deal, where we get to see all our friends, the sons of the players and the coaches and, and, and Kyle Guy and Raymond Felton and North Carolina and Virginia and all the guys. And it's all just coming together. It all rolls into one. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. What was your question, Lady Jane? Sorry. <laughs> that, that, that was, no, that, that was amazing. You, you're the, I think you're one of the best storytellers I've ever heard in my life. Um, so, Anthony has so a Lori, question. So Lori, she, one night we were in Las Vegas uh, with the Grateful Dead and we were just having a rocking good time. And she looked at me during a quiet moment and she said, I figured you out, big guy. I figured, here's Baycott down low. Oh, can't make the layup, but we'll go to the line. And so Lori looked at me in the darkness and she said, I figured you out, big guy. I looked at her quizzically and she said, yeah, your mind is like a slot machine. <laughs> and all these wheels just keep turning all the time. And then you never know where they're going to end up. And so where it ends up, that's where the story comes out, man. And I'm super lucky in that I've, I've just had so many opportunities in my life. And that's one of the things that I admire so much about Kareem, who is working so hard to create opportunities for others through his Skyhook Foundation, through all the work he's doing, his, his social justice award, which he just presented to Carmelo Anthony the other night at the Laker game. And right. next Friday night, or this Friday night, this we're having Kareem's 75th birthday party at the Crypt. Wow. And it's going to be fantastic. 
And I got to go to his 50th birthday party too. It was at a private club in Hollywood. We'd have the time of our life. And I walked in, I hadn't seen him in a while because he had retired and I was off doing other things. And so I walk in on his 50th birthday party. Oh, over the top and they can't get it. And the Tar Heels are up and down the court in transition. Here comes RJ Davis. He pulls up, he's hit from behind and he'll go to the line for three. What a team, what a game. And so I walk into Kareem's party Oh, they're here calling for me here. And and, and and Kareem standing there welcoming everybody. He was very personable, very generous, very affable guy. And he's standing there welcoming me and Laurie. And we come in and Kareem's got a cane and he's got a boot on. And like he's 50 years old. I look at him and say, Kareem, you haven't, you haven't played basketball in eight years. He was the first 20-year player. He made college basketball, carried the NBA. And I, and he looked and I looked at him and said, what's wrong? You got a cane and a boot. He said, oh, man, my little toe was really bothering me. So the doctor had to carve on it. I said, well, wow. So how many operations is that for you, Kareem? You're 50 years old. And he said, Bill, that was my first operation. Wow. I've, I've had 39 orthopedic operations. But I'm alive and I'm hanging and I'm doing well. And they're here yelling at me and screaming at me that I got to go. And I got to be part of the halftime show. I know, I know so, you got to go. So you'll be hanging with us on June 2nd. We're just a couple of months away. So real quick, give us your prediction. Who's going to win it all? In the NBA this year, who's taking it in home? the NBA? I have no idea. That's still three months away. <laughs> I, I know. Okay, you tell me who's going to be healthy. If you tell me who's going to be healthy, you know what? I, a, it's a ten-point game for North Carolina. Wow, wow, this is fantastic. But you. I'll know a lot more when I get through this game tonight here. I've been so focused on college basketball. We are the conference of champions. This is the final four, and we are hanging, man. This is special. Thank you, Lady Jade, and Bill, thank you, you everybody. Up. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll see you tell on Kareem, Tell Kareem we love him. We'll see him at his birthday party. And just remind him, just remind him that if you can't be on time, Kareem, be early. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Have a great one. Thanks, Bill. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. All right, you guys, make sure you keep your questions coming in. Bill had to jump off. Kareem will be joining us here pretty soon. Um, and your your dad is actually now in the room, Matthew. Uh, Matt, yeah, he's actually in the room. So we were able to push him in the room. So, um, hey, Mr. Lee, are you there? He, maybe he has to figure out his mute button. I don't know. I have I, I have no idea. <laughs> hey, how is that? Like, I mean, let's talk about it. How is that? Even for the guys that are in the NBA right now, how is that to hear somebody like Bill sharing these stories? And I mean, he's achieved something that I guess every player would love to achieve. I mean, he's done, I mean, every, I mean, he's amazing. How, how does that feel to get that opportunity to kind of be in the room and hear his stories? Any of you guys? I think, I think, I think Bill as a person is just phenomenal in itself. Like you didn't even have to know that he won, you know, NBA championships or college basketball championships and to feel like, oh, he's a special human being. But I mean, no, nah, it's, it's super incredible. And it's, um, you know, there's people in front of you that, has done a lot of things that you're trying to do. And it's just good to hear that he's an actual genuine person too at the same time. So that's, that's really big for me. Yeah, that, that was, that was really, I'm not, look, I don't even play. And that was like, actually like surreal to kind of watch because you have somebody that achieves something that he achieves and for him to be personable and kind and, you know, all of those things is just, I mean, honestly, I'm kind of wowed out right, right now. I'm like, that was crazy, right? To be able to take over a room like that and just <laughs> take have, over yeah like have that amount of energy and just stories and just it, it, uh, that that was that was really amazing while commentating on the game in the middle of every <laughs> that was so funny to me oh. all at the same time all right you guys if you were just tuning in with us we have kyle guy on jared butler scotty thurman's in the building we have clarence rupert we have matthew lee um the legendary kareem abdul jabbar will be joining us so if you have any questions for these fellas please feel free to put your questions in the chat this is um this is all about you guys being able to to ask the questions you have been dying to ask um oh anthony i just asked anthony's question i'm sorry anthony i just stole your question um 
Oh, yeah. Just want to remind everybody, if you want to sign up for the NBA Finals Hang with Bill Walton, you can actually email Tommy. So here's the email. It's in the chat, but I'm going to give you the email. It's Tom at Let's Hang dot live. That's Tom at Let's Hang dot live. And he will help you sign up after the game or tomorrow before it opens up to the public to make sure that you get in for the NBA finals that are going to be going down on June the 2nd. So make sure you get that. Take advantage of that opportunity. Um, somebody said, I'd watch Bill Walton call a game of tic-tac-toe. I absolutely <laughs> agree. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is hilarious. That is so funny. All right, so there, I have a question for the St. Peter's guys. Um, the question is, how do you feel about Coach Holloway heading back to his alma mater? Um, I'm, I'm happy for him, you know. I, I feel like that would be a coach dream, knowing that he was a, a All-American there. You know, he's a, he's, like, he's a great coach. So for him to go back to a school where he grew up at, you know, I'm, I'm happy right. for him, you know. There's no bad blood between us. So, yeah, that's still my guy. Matthew, did you want to chime in on that, or are you good? Yeah, no, nah, I, I think it's amazing. It's kind of like a like a full circle story, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure every, any any basketball player, uh, uh, especially if somebody that, that accomplished what he accomplished, would, would love to go back to their school and and, and give back to their community. And, and being the head coach at, at, your, at your old school is just something surreal. I'm pretty sure. And and he he's expressed to us how excited he is for this, and, and we love him, and we're excited for him. Nice. Ahmad, you have a question for Jared. Go ahead and unmute your mic, Ahmad Lewis. <laughs> Ahmad, you can go ahead and unmute your mic. If you can't find it, I'll ask your question for you. <clears throat> All right, well, Ahmad's question was for Jared. He says, what's your biggest moment in your basketball career? Uh, my biggest moment? Uh, I think, obviously, my NBA career has is, is just begun. Um, but, I mean, for me, I think winning um, the NCAA championship was definitely a big time for me just because, like, the team we had, like, the um, the camaraderie that we had, like, the, the, the fight that we had, the things that we had to go through playing through COVID, playing in the bubble, like that was just like so special of a, a group thing. I think um, me personally, that's like something I can never forget. Something that's like very dear to my heart. And um, you know, that's, that's definitely my biggest moment. Nice. Okay, got a question for Kyle too. It says, as a former tournament MOP, who is your pick for the MOP this year? Um, this one too, really? Yeah, I would, I mean, it depends on who wins, but if, North Carolina wins. I'd probably go with uh, Brady Manick. Um, I think there's a lot of people on that team that go unnoticed. I mean, Armando, I mean, he's, he, I think he's had 20 rebounds every game in the tournament or something like that. Um, sometimes they don't reward the big fellas, though, unfortunately. So I would say him. And then if, if, if Kansas wins, um, probably uh, Ochai. Wait a second. Well, there he is, you guys. There he is. This is a really, really big deal. NBA I Hall of Famer, six-time NBA. I can't make sense out of it. You want to hear it? No. We can hear him. He can hear us. Yeah, you're wrong. They said you're wrong. Hey, yeah. Oh, I'm, I can't hear anything. You can't hear us, Kareem? Hello? Can you hear us? Can you hear I us? Can, I can barely hear you. It's it's like you're slowed up. It's coming across slow. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have to work on the connection and see what's going on. Let us know if you can hear us better whenever you get a chance. Are you there, Kareem? I'm here, but I, I, I can't make sense of what you're saying. Okay. Hey, Tommy, jump on and see if your mic works a little better. Maybe it's, uh, I just want to make sure it's not on my end. Uh, yeah, Kareem, can you hear us? Okay, I, geez, this is ridiculous. 
I can't I can't make out what they're saying. I don't know what to talk what to tell them. When when we when we did our run through, certain people using certain equipment had this problem. So we're gonna figure it out and we'll get you back in the second half and solve the problem. Perfect. We'll we'll chase it down. Sorry Perfect. about that, Kareem. All right, so we'll get Kareem back on you guys uh for the second half. So you all will be able to ask your questions. So I would go ahead and let you know, please, please, please get your questions ready because I'm sure they're going to be flowing through. Um, we only have what, two minutes left in this first half. Let's see. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny. Christian said, even the greatest can't escape tech issues. You got to love tech, right? This is a, a, a part of going live, being live. This is the beauty of it all. Um, I, got, I got a question for, for, for Jared. If I, if okay. I can, yeah. Uh, Jared, obviously you were you were a great point guard in your time and Baylor, obviously you're in the hey, NBA you now. Uh, what what advice do you have for, for young young college point guards? Still trying to stay? Come here. Oh man, I think um the biggest thing for me was like I tried to be good at oh, all facets God. of the game. Okay. So right, like pick and roll reads, um, shooting off the bounce, um, um, catch and shoot threes. Being able to guard, pick and roll, like and I think all those facets, guarding. like especially okay. once you get in the NBA, like like teams are so easy uh, at picking at your weaknesses. And like for me, I tried to go in the NBA without any weaknesses. And I know that's like hard thing to do, but like there's like a few things in each each facet that you can be good at, and um, like and just master those so those things, like off the dribble threes. Like I had to master that shot. Um, being able to guard the ball, the different techniques, how to get the ball screen. So like that, those type of things, I thought they just have no holes in my game. Like that was, that's the biggest advice I'm giving about, for sure. Appreciate uh, I have a question for Jared as well. Like, how was like the uh, transition from college to NBA? Man, it's, um, it's a huge transition just because like, you don't really know what the NBA is like. For me, when I was like chasing my dream, I was just thinking NBA, the letters, NBA. And um, when I finally got here, it, was, it, it wasn't it was completely different, but it is a different lifestyle as far as just hooping because you had hooping and you and you went to school, so you had so much structure around your life. Um, but in NBA, it's just like you hoop and then you kind of do whatever you want. And that was like kind of weird for me just from being like a, a young adult. Um, so that's been like the biggest transition. But as far as basketball goes, it's kind of the same thing. Like what I was doing at Baylor, I'm doing the same thing I'm, I'm doing in the NBA, it's just I'm doing it every day, and uh, and obviously the talent is is at a different level. But man, like I think the other aspect of it, like the lifestyle outside of basketball, is like the biggest biggest difference. And you got money now too. It's, it's a little easier to move around. <laughs> Did you just say and you got money now too? I know yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I got a I got a question for Kyle guy. I was I'm wondering if you um if you miss being at Virginia. Yeah, I do, man. I mean. Yeah, you miss college, but at the same time, like you're, like I would feel really weird if I was still in college right now. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Only four, like I don't know, but I I definitely enjoy my time there. It's everything I wanted, so I I definitely miss it. And because of COVID and all that kind of stuff, I really haven't been able to go back very often. Um, Bro, so, Jacob, if you can mute yourself for me, there we go. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry, Kyle. Go ahead. No, you're good. That was all. I finished it, so we're good. All right. I have a really quick trivia I want to run past you guys since we're getting ready to end the first half. $50, courtesy of Academy Sports and Outdoors. First person to put the answer in the chat correctly is going to win. Jared, you lost the last one. You swear you I know. You I thought I was going to win it, too. I looked it up and everything. <laughs> oh, you Googled it. You cheated. You admitted to cheating. Okay. All right. Here's the question. Kyle Guy and Jared Butler are both recent NCAA tournament stars. Which of the following is not true? A, they both were drafted in the second round in the NBA draft. You can't, y'all can't, Kyle and Jared, you can't, yeah. B, they both currently play for the same NBA team. Or C, they both won the NCAA tournament MOP. Which is not true? A, B, or C, which is not true? True. There's no way we both won the most outstanding player. There's no way, right? There's no way. Let's do it here. <laughs> Scotty Thurman is the winner! 
<laughs> and then right after him was Tyler. So now here is the defining moment for this $50 Academy Sports and Outdoor gift card. Does Scotty keep the card or does he give it to Tyler? Scotty. I got to give it to Tyler. Oh, okay. Look, I thought you were going to be like, I'm keeping it so I can go. <laughs> no, I, I can't do Tyler like that. All right. Well, congratulations, Tyler. Tyler, you just got you $50 from Academy Sports and Outdoors. And again, there is a tile at the bottom where you can get all your collegiate gear at Academy Sports Fan Shop. So just click it. And don't forget, at the top, you can also click to register for the June 2nd NBA Finals hang. Bill Walton will be back. You know, he's a ball of energy. He'll be hanging with us then as well. So um, there was somebody on here really quick. I wanted to get uh, Tyler wanted to jump on again. I had a question for Kyle. Tyler, go ahead and unmute yourself, especially since you're our trivia winner. Yeah, I have a question for Kyle. Okay. So, what was it like shooting those like, huge free throws in the final four? Like, how were you feeling? Yeah, full transparency. I was uh, I was nervous, but it was like the good kind of nervous. Like when I stepped to the line. Well, first off, I was like the only one in the gym that heard they blew the whistle because it was right next to me. Um, so like Auburn fans were going crazy, but I like I'm pretty sure I put my jersey over my face just to like like calm myself. Um, and when I went to the line, I was basically like putting pressure on myself. I was like, this is a moment like every kid's dreamt of always like couldn't wait for right practiced it in the backyard playing hoops or whatever there's 10 million people watching 80,000 people in the stands like why not me so I was definitely nervous but it was like the good kind of nervous that makes you feel alive so um after I hit two and they called timeout um I remember coach Bennett was like drawing stuff up for if I made it or if I missed it and I didn't even go in the huddle. I just stayed to myself. I was off to the side. So I, if I would have missed it, or even when I made it, I had no idea what to do or what the rest of the team was doing. I really like what you said about the green line. That's one of my dreams. I didn't practice that in my mini week. What did you say? I, I, I've been practicing those moments on my mini week. On the mini hoop, right? Yeah, that's how it starts, man. That's how it starts. <laughs> I thank you. Yep, for sure. Thank you. Tyler, I love your bravery that you keep, you know, just asking these questions. It takes a lot, a lot, a lot of courage to do that. Um, Diop, I know you had a question for Jared. We're going to get you coming up because we're going into our halftime, um, which is going to be a very unique uh, situation. Um, we're going to be piping in an Instagram live conversation between some amazing women. Um, and if we're not able to get it technically, then we'll continue on with our conversation and let you guys continue to ask your questions. So we have Monique Billings, who uh, plays for the WNBA Atlanta Dream, former UCLA baller, led the team to the Sweet 16. Joining her will be Angel Reese, currently on the University of Maryland women's basketball team, and Jersey Wolfenbarger, a current Arkansas Razorback, who was named to the SEC's all-freshman team. Um, before we pipe them in, I got to say thank you to the fellas that have joined us. Thank you so much for hanging with us. Kyle, you are amazing. Jared, I know you're going to be back for the second half. Scotty, thank you so much. Clarence, Matthew, um, we're also going to have Kareem on for the second half as well. And I know you guys enjoyed Bill. So thank you all so, so much for those that won't be back for the second half. But you have been absolutely Scotty, Appreciate you guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you, are you guys awesome. ready for our Instagram live yeah. conversation again? Here they go. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Tell me what, like, what have they, or what have you been, what have y'all been doing? No, nah, this, we've just been, like, chilling. Like, that, well, last week we had off, and then now, like, I'm just doing rehab and stuff on all nagging injuries and stuff. So just trying to get that rehab. I think that's really important, so. Yes. I'm trying to get Jersey into this live. It's saying she, wait, view request. Okay. Hey, girl. Hey. Is she here? Yeah, she's on here. I can't see. Why can't I see? View request. I see y'all, and it's showing me, so I don't know. Can't wait, the people, people watching. Can you guys see? Can you guys see all three of us? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Hello. And Les. Okay, who y'all got winning this game? Hi. Hi, this is Kareem. I would have to agree. Can you hear him now? Can you hear? Yeah. I can't even laugh. Yes. Um, I mean, we can hear you. Hi, Kareem. A lot of the shots, I know that. Mm -hmm. They're not letting nothing up. And all the jelly and stuff, they're blocking that stuff. It's been a good game. I mean, the score doesn't show, but like, well, I mean, they're, I think the game is like 13 now. So, I mean, it's a really good game. Oh, I feel yeah, like Go ahead. Sorry. Can you mute your mic, please? I'm seeing about games like the championship game, like Final Four is it really just comes down to defense. And, you know, because both teams can score. So the one that plays the best defense is the one that's going to win. Exactly. Yeah, I like that the refs are letting them play, too. Like, it's it's yeah. low-key chippy, grimy. But, like, I feel like in a big game like this, like, you've got to let them yeah. rock out. <laughs> so let's talk women's hoops. Um, give me your guys' thoughts on the game yesterday. Like, anything. Oh I know y'all had to Stop. be watching. Stop <laughs> They're just a powerhouse. I mean, they have the length, they have the size, they have guards, they have posts, they have everything. Great coach. I mean, it was just a really I think it was a good game on both sides, though. I mean, women. All right, give us just a second. I think that the uh, the streaming went out for just a moment so we can continue hearing that conversation with those amazing ladies. It should be popping back in here pretty soon. All right, hold on. Let me get, let me, let me hang up. Do a test real quick and see if you could hear him. All right, let's see. Kareem, can you hear us? Oh, hello, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, we can yes. hear you. Can hear us. I can hear you. Yes. yes. Oh, good. Welcome. Thank you so much. We are so glad to have you on. Glad to be here. Well, first of all, you're looking great. Your house looks great. Are you enjoying the game so far? Well, you know, it's not much of a game right now. Uh, North Carolina is really uh, taking charge. Yes. You, you missed your friend. Um, uh, you missed your friend, and he, and he had a message for you uh, that I wrote down. Bill Walton was on, and he said, you were supposed to be early, not on time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like uh, we, we were late, but uh, it, it was a technical problem. We couldn't do anything about it. No, it's okay, and we are just so blessed that you're on Hanging With Us, Kareem. And Bill also told us to let you know that he can't wait to see you at your 75th birthday. That's awesome. I hope to see him. Yeah. It's going to be a nice, we're going to have a nice time. Now, we, what we're going to be doing today is taking questions from some of your biggest fans that are going to be on. This is legendary to have you on. So we're going to allow them to jump on and ask you questions. I'll be asking some questions. So it'll just be very interactive. Um, and again, it's such it's such an honor to have you hanging with us today. Well, thank you. All right, Ryan, you have a question for Kareem. We'll go ahead and start taking your questions now during halftime. Um, so, Ryan, unmute your mic, and you can ask Kareem your question. Let me turn it on. Yeah. Hi, Kareem. I was just wondering, uh, what happened to the sky? Hey, Ryan. Why Hello, Ryan. Ryan, you're going to have to speak up, and we can't see you on the camera. Hello, Ryan. Hello. Can, can you hear me? Turn yes, on. I can hear you. There you go. Okay, go ahead, Ryan. So what's your question? I think he's on mute. He's on can you mute. hear me now? There you I go. can hear you now, yes. Why do you? No one utilizes the sky hook in the NBA today. I, I really don't know why it's impossible to block, and uh, it you know it, it enables you to keep control of the ball and not have a turnover. And I think it just has to do with the fact that um, there aren't too many people teaching it now. All the young players that are playing the game they want to shoot three pointers. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Imani, you have a question for Kareem? 
Yeah. I'll read you Imani's question. Imani's question was, Kareem, how did you stay calm in the finals? I stayed calm in the finals because I was able to uh, understand what was expected of me. And I just went out there and tried to do my job. Uh, everybody understood what they were supposed to do. And uh, we went out there and executed. Great. Now, Kareem, we won't spend too much time on this, but um, there was a comment that was made briefly about LeBron that I think people took out of context. So we just want to give you the opportunity to kind of clarify exactly what you meant um, briefly by your comment, because again, you know, things can get taken out of context. Well, you know, I already said everything I, I have to say about that. I, I, I don't want to keep bringing that up. So okay. uh, I'm going to decline to answer that. Okay, sounds good. Samantha, you have another question for Kareem? I do. Hello, Kareem. How are you today? Hi. I'm doing very well. So I'm actually asking this on behalf of my friend Sergio, who says hi because he's a huge Lakers fan. Okay. What was your relationship like with Magic when you first joined the Lakers? When Magic first joined the Lakers, he was uh, just um, bright-eyed and, and full of enthusiasm. And uh, he was a big um, uh, fan of uh, Parliament Funkadelic. <laughs> so um, he would come right before practice and we could hear him in the in the parking lot because he had his uh, box up so loud. We could hear Parliament Fun Funkadelic and know that uh, Magic would be in, in practice in a couple of minutes. Um, it was fun having that experience with him, you know, cause he, he made it possible for me to understand that it's okay to un to enjoy the moment. You know, I, I had had a, a very um, serious approach to the game. And um, a lot of times I, I missed out on uh, enjoying some of the things that I was able to do. So now that uh, once I got with, with, with Magic, it was uh, a lot easier for me to, to see and understand how I could react and not, uh, you know, not upset anybody, you know? Great, thanks, Kareem. Uh, Garrett, you. <laughs> Garrett, you have a question for Kareem as well? Yeah, um, hi, this is awesome. Um, Wait, can you hear me? Hi, how are you doing, Garrett? Good. Um, what do you think of kind of the new batch of centers in the NBA kind of taking over with Jokic and Embiid and Kat all kind of putting up incredible seasons in the paint and shooting threes? Well, I, I was waiting for it to happen where the uh, centers would uh, find some way to make themselves useful the way the game is played now, utilizing the three-point shot. So it, to me, it's it's great to see uh, centers that can go out, uh, you know, after they ro run this pick and roll, they can step back behind the three-point line and, you know, make the shot. Uh, Embiid is very good at it and um i i and uh jokic i just saw him play uh yesterday same deal so uh it's a it's just an expansion of um, how to play the game and uh, i'm glad that the they found some room for the centers to be involved cool thanks uh, thank you for your question we have Imani, who's a sophomore in high school, that actually has a question for you as well. Imani, you can go ahead and unmute your mic. Yeah, so do you have any tips for me as I uh, play big man in high school? What high school do you go to? Uh, I go to Pick North in Ohio. In Ohio, okay. Uh, I would say that you need to learn the fundamentals, how to pass, how to shoot, how to defend, how to rebound, how to box out, all of those things are important things. So if you can uh, get yourself to uh, learn how to do those things, you, you will be a useful player for whatever team you, you uh, make. Thank you. 
Hey, Kareem, I wanted to tell you, I saw you here in Dallas. I'm in Dallas, Texas, and St. Phillips had you come in as their keynote speaker. And it was a testament to what Bill said about you earlier, that one thing that you try to do every single day is make the world a better place. And you came in and you spoke to those kids in that audience, and you were so graceful and so loving and so inspirational. Um, so first of all, I appreciated that. Um, and oh, you, thank you. I thought that was amazing. Can you share with us a little bit about your Skyhook Foundation? Well, the Skyhook Foundation is something that I founded to try to help kids get an understanding of where the best jobs will be in the 21st century. Um, science, technology, engineering, and math will be the place where you can get a great job and not have to worry about uh, robbing banks or, or selling drugs to make some money, okay? And um, we have to learn about that, um, especially in minority co communities where the educational opportunities aren't what they should be. So uh, we try to give the kids the opportunity to go to camp and spend uh, five nights and four days doing hands-on uh, experiments uh, in science. Uh, they, they go out, they observe the night sky, uh, they take uh, water samples, they observe the flora and fauna and uh, try to see how they can have a useful uh, life uh, post-graduation. It's amazing. Thank you for that. Thank you for your contribution. That That is amazing. Thurman, yeah, we're trying to give kids a shot that can't be bought. That's the, that's the whole idea. Oh, I, lo I love I love that slogan. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Thurman, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Thurman Moore. All right, I'll ask his question for you. It says, Kareem... I have the first three issues of your Mycroft Holmes comic. Are you still writing that? Uh, I'm not. Well, oh, hello, how are you? And no, I'm not still writing that. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to continue to do that. Okay. I got you. You're asking for it. I think you should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you get enough demand, I'm going to have to go back and... Uh, Try and sit down and, and write some more of those. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Billy Harris, you have a question for Kareem? Billy Harris? Devante. Go ahead. Hey, Devante. What up? Hi, Devante. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Okay. So, Kareem, we do have some other players on with you right now. Uh, we have Jared Butler that's on um, the place for the Jazz. We have Devante Graham from the New Orleans Pelicans. I believe Scotty Thurman is still on from uh, Arkansas. So we have some other players that are on with you as well right now. Okay. We've also finally got Raymond Felton in here. Oh, nice. Uh, from UNC. Yes. Hey, Raymond. Raymond Felton's here as well. How y'all doing? Hey, Raymond. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yes. We're taking some questions right now from the audience. So, um, during halftime and taking some questions for Kareem as well. So of course we have the the GOAT Kareem on with us. Oh man, it's an honor to be on with the legend. Yeah. It's, it's an honor. For sure, for sure. <laughs> um, again, continue to put the questions in the chat for any of these the fellas. Universal fandom reigns supreme. Raymond, what you got going You said what now? I said, what you got going on? Yo, yo. <laughs> No, I'm just here chilling, watching the game. All right, uh, let's see. Billy Harris, you had a question. Billy Harris, please unmute your mic. Billy Harris. 
All right, well, I'll ask Billy's question. Um, Kareem, Billy yeah. wants to know, he said he heard how of an amazing person you were. Did you really bring magic orange juice every day at 6 a.m.? Or is that a false story? Uh, no, I had I had the uh, rookies bring me a newspaper every morning. <laughs> the New York Times, and that, that was it. They didn't have to bring me orange juice. That was... Uh, that was crazy. It certainly wasn't true. It's just something that they made up. Uh, of course, I guess it sounded good. But the newspaper is what they brought you every single morning. What newspaper? That's it. That's it. But they did bring you the newspaper every single morning. Yes, they did. <laughs> I hate rookie duties, man. It's, it's the worst thing in the world. I hate it. <laughs> So let's talk about that. We've never heard these stories. Tell us about rookie. Well, rookie duty is uh, the the type of grief that we can give to the rookies only in their rookie year. So you know, once they made it through a year, they you know they on board and they get to torment the rookies. <laughs> so what were your rookie duties when you were a rookie, Kareem? When I was a rookie, I played too many minutes, so they didn't. I, I was playing more minutes than any rookie, so there, there weren't that many uh, vets on, on my team when I got up there in Milwaukee, one or two, and they weren't very uh, demanding. So I, I, I was lucky I got past it. Nice. Steve Davey wanted to know, Kareem, who was the hardest guy you ever had to defend? Geez, you know, the hardest guys for me to defend are the guys that could uh, shoot the jump shot real good from the top of the key or, you know, out by the three point line. So people like Bob McAdoo or Dan Issel, uh, they gave me a problem because I had to go out there and play them where I didn't play my best defense. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So we, we have another question about um, the comparison with John w Wooden and Coach K and their contributions to college basketball. Um, how do they compare? Well, I think you can uh, say they compare by the fact that they both use the game to teach uh, how to live a moral life. So Coach Wooden used uh, basketball to teach us how to be good fathers, good husbands, good citizens. That was what he wanted from us uh, after we got our degrees. So, you know, I, I really benefited from having that type of reinforcement. Nice. Vicki, you have a question for Kareem. Go ahead and unmute your mic. All right, I'll ask it for Vicki. It says, what was it like to play against Wilt Chamberlain? Well, playing against Will Chamberlain was uh, an interesting night out, an interesting night at work because uh, he was the strongest guy you ever saw. He weighed over 300 pounds and he's powerfully built, but he didn't like moving around a lot, you know? So uh, I felt that if I could move around and uh, make him chase me, he'd get tired. And uh, usually he did. He liked to be stationary right under the basket. So okay. it, it helped me uh, develop my game plan against him, you know, where I get uh, open shots in the paint because Wilt was uh, not that keen on, on, on guarding people. Wow. Well, okay. So, Kareem, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, – the Social Justice Champion Award. Um, we know that you just honored, you know, Carmelo Anthony. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, in order to to get things done today, uh, you got to have some type of focus on what your problems are. So, we are trying to encourage the various NBA players to focus on the problems that are exist in in their hometown or where they play and to do something about it. And uh, the guys that have the most outstanding record in, in what they have done to
to help their communities, uh, they're the ones that will uh, get the award. Oh, wow. Okay, that's so nice. So Carmelo Anthony fit that bill for you for this year, for the, as the last recipient. I'm sorry? And so you chose Carmelo Anthony was your, was, was your choice for the, as the last recipient of that award, which is amazing. I didn't, I didn't make the choice. It was made by committee. Thank goodness no one can blame me <laughs> for, uh, you know, the choice that was made. Carmelo <laughs> has done a lot of things He's done a lot of things that have made him a hero in his community. And uh, it was real easy, I think, for the people to uh, to pick him and give him the honor. Gotcha. Thank you. Well, you guys, if you're just joining us for the second half of Hang, this is where you get a chance to interact with some of your favorite players. If you have a question, please feel free to put it in the chat and we'll get you to get off uh, mute. That way it just doesn't get too chaotic. Of course, we have the legendary Kareem Abdul-Jabbar that's joining us. We have Raymond Felton, who's with us, Scotty Thurman, um, Jared Butler, and we're gonna be having some other guys jumping on here pretty soon as well that are gonna be joining us. So if you have a question for any of these guys, please, please, please feel free to put them in the chat. Look. Uh, Tyler, Tyler, you had a question, right? For Raymond and Kareem. Yes. Okay. First one. Talk loud, Ty speak up loud, Tyler. Okay. First one's for Raymond. How did it feel? I'm a Thunder fan, so how did it feel to be like playing with Russell Westbrook for a goal? How you doing, Tyler? Uh, man, it was amazing, man. Play against two guys that can really play the game, score the ball, that draw so much attention. It really makes the game easy for me. So, you know, it was um, as a point guard, me and Russ play together sometimes, and then having PG such a bona fide score like that on the, on the other side of that wing, my job was very easy at nights, very easy. Thank you. You're welcome. Second, the Kareem. We have to speak. Hi, Tyler. Speak loud. Kareem. Oh, sorry. Kareem. Um, yeah. How does it feel to like hold the NBA scoring title? And do you think well, anyone will ever pass you? Um, well, there are a couple of guys that have had chances to pass it. Uh, Carl Malone. And LeBron has a chance to pass it coming up. So, uh, you know, you might see a change in there. And it feels good, though. It makes you proud of the thing that you uh, accomplished. And that's uh, that's very important, you know, to have that pride and set an example for other kids to follow. Thank you. You're welcome. John, you had a question? Yeah, I'm just wondering, because we've got this great mix of current NBA players and guys who played, you know, o over the years. Kareem, is it easier today, do you think, for players to have a social conscience and to be aware and to take action and, and even to talk about these things than it was when you first came into the league? And, do, and, and what do the other guys think about that as well? Well, um, you know, I can't see you. You're at the top of your... Your head is, is missing. How about now? Well, I think you better raise your, your camera. Cause it's because of all my gray hair. I like to hide that, but okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm sorry, what was your question again? And my question was, you know, we've got this mix of guys in the room right now, some of whom are currently playing, some of whom recently stopped, and, and you know, you came into the league several decades ago. Was it difficult back then to get the guys talking about uh, social awareness, you know, to, to express themselves about, you know, important issues. Is it easier today for players to do that and to take action in their local communities and things like that than it was when you first started in the league? Well, yeah, I, I think uh, social justice is a lot more on guys' minds today that are in the league. 
you know? So they have ideas about what they would like to do to make their communities a better place. And uh, that's what we, we're trying to do. We're trying to encourage all these players to uh, become active in their communities and find out what the other people in their communities want, uh, you know, what they need, how they can uh, improve what's happening in their community. And and for somebody like like Jared, who, who's playing now, or um, you know, is it is it something that the guys talk about now? fairly often is it something that's on your minds uh, yeah or... I, I think with um i think the biggest difference is the social media aspect um where you see guys you know very vocal on social media and you know everybody seems to have an opinion especially on social media so i think um I, I don't think it's easier or harder to have a social con conscience but i think um with social media everybody has been um really like i don't know um pressured to kind of have a have a voice about what's going on in the community and stuff like that. So, um, is it like our daily c conversation in the locker room? Probably not. But um, I think um, when when the when the topic does arise, we do we do talk about it a lot. Thanks, Jared. Does that make you nervous? You talked about the pressure of having to speak up on certain topics, but we live in such a sensitive society where you have to be politically correct on everything, and yeah. one little word can be taken out of context, and it's like you know we have cancel culture right now. So, yeah, I, I I think it's I think um, you got to be very sure of what you believe um, in this day and age, and like you have to run the risk of being canceled. Um, and I also think a lot of it, we have a lot of group thinking, like everybody just says, oh, that sounds right. You know, so let's, I'm going to just jump on board with that topic or that issue or that, that construct. Um, but um, I think at the end of the day, you got to be just sure of what you believe in. I think that's just what politics is at the end of the day anyway. But um, so, yeah, there is some pressure. You, you better, if you're going to speak out about it, you better know what you're talking about and better believe in it. Well, Mike Bibby just joined us as well, former NBA player for 14 seasons, currently coaching in Arizona. Hi, Mike. How are you? Welcome to the hang. I know he's here. He's probably having some problems unmuting his mic. Mike, whenever you're able to unmute your mic, jump on. We want to say hello to you. Uh, and we're glad that you hey, while, we're, while we're waiting for Mike, I've got a question for uh, Kareem. Sure. Uh, which is yeah. uh, one of my favorite movies, uh, as well as my brother's and my father-in-law's, is Airplane, which uh, <laughs> you're in. So first of all, I want to thank you for being amazing in that. And second of all, uh, you know, how did it come about that you were in that movie? And what was that experience like doing that, you know, during your career? Well, uh, doing the movie Airplane was really a, a great opportunity for me. Uh, the Zucker brothers um, were from Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin, and had seen me play when I played for Milwaukee. And uh, they thought it would be neat to have me in the movie because uh, Pete Rose couldn't make uh, the uh, shoot because it was summertime and he was playing and uh, I was in off season and uh, they gave me the opportunity to have that role. And um, it was nice for me to be able to, to make fun of my image because people had gotten the wrong idea about me. And uh, to see me spoofing my image really made people smile and have, have a, a chance to laugh about who I was and what I was all about. Hey, Devante, there's a question for you. Um, you know, formerly playing for Kansas, what does Kansas need to do to win the game today? Yeah, it's looking kind of rough for them right now. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> Relax, relax. <laughs> yep. Oh. Uh, got a rebound. Um, and Astro, I don't think we can get a good start in the second half, but I'm not sure second chance points Carolina got, but they they keep offensive rebounds and, and, and scoring. So if we just limit them to the one shot, go down and just run our offense and play with confidence, we'll be fine. Just foul on the three pointer. So. We, we right there. We back. Nice. Okay, there he is. Hey, Mike. Thanks for joining us. I was trying to get on for like 20 minutes. I couldn't get on. 
<laughs> What's going on, Mike? How are you? How you guys doing? All right. Mike, we Sorry have to you guys on. late. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's, it's, it's no worries. You know, that's that's the power of technology. It works sometimes, <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't. So we appreciate you. We appreciate you jumping on. We're just taking questions from the audience. Feel free to jump in at any time, Mike, if you have any comments. Again, you know, we have Kareem on today, which is pretty, pretty legendary to have him on. How you doing, Kareem? Everything is good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Good to see you. Likewise. How's your dad doing? He's doing good. He's coaching in Mexico right now. He has a little gig in Mexico for a couple months, so he's out there coaching for a little bit. Oh, good. So I think he should be back. He'll be back in California, I think, next couple months months or so. Okay. Well, yeah. give, me my, give me my regards when you talk to him. I will, definitely. All right, Christian, you had a question as well. Christian Hunt, if you want to unmute, and if you're not able to unmute, I can ask your question for you, Christian Hunt. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Uh, this question's for Kareem. Um, so I just had a quick question. You've had such a long expanse of your career, a long legendary career. Um, can you talk about like a time where you faced a great period of adversity? And then what, what did you do to overcome it? Maybe you doubted yourself, you weren't sure what you were doing. Um, well, like what did you do to sort of center yourself and bring yourself back to a period of greatness? Well, you know, I, I just, uh, tried to relate to the things that I ha find uh, comfort and strength in, you know, my religion, and just uh, knowing that I had the talent to go out there and, and overcome what, what I was dealing with. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Uh, Ryan McHugh, you had a question or a comment for Mike, maybe? Go ahead and unmute yourself, Mike Ryan McHugh. Um, what'd you say? Ryan had a comment for Mike. Basically, he just wanted to let you know, Mike, you were unstoppable in the NBA playoffs. He's a huge fan of yours. Oh, well, thank, thank, you, thank you very much. Yes. Thanks, Mike. That was very kind of you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Evan Smith, you had a question for Devante. Um, you know, as far as uh, Christian's question about adversity. Yes. Um, when I was a, a junior, we played the University of Houston and lost the game in February. And uh, everybody, we had been ranked number one. And everybody jumped on the Houston bandwagon and said, Houston's the best team. And um, we were hoping that we would get an opportunity to play Houston again. So uh, there was a Sports Illustrated uh, article on the game. I cut the cover off and put it up in my locker room. So every day that I had practice, I had to see that we had lost to Houston and uh, you know we had uh, some business to take care of. And we finally got to play them again in the semifinals of the uh, NC2A tournament and ran them off the court. And um, it was a very satisfying moment for me. Amazing. Thanks for coming back to my question. I, I, I know I'd heard the term bulletin board material or locker room material before, but I didn't think anybody actually took it literally. Yeah, you can, uh, you can motivate yourself uh, just thinking about what you want to do. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming back to that. That's a that's a great story. Devonte Evan Smith wanted to ask you a question. Uh, Evan wanted to know what was your favorite non basketball memory from Kansas. Um, Evan also said that you guys had English one on one together your freshman year, <laughs> and you were your favorite player. So, what was your favorite non basketball memory at Kansas, Evan? Oh. From Evan. Favorite non basketball memory at Kansas. Um, I would say probably 
Um, uh, that's that's a. I've never heard that question before. That's funny. Um, favorite non basketball memory because everything was just basketball while I was there. But um, I think just you know the the, the family oriented like Coach Self used to have us over at his house. You know, in the summer times, we could go to his house and just get in his pool. He would, him and his, and his wife, and then would have food for us. So, I mean, I think other than basketball and traveling and all of that, in the Final Four, I think you know, moments like that was was very special. And by the way, we down by one right now, just in case. That's what <laughs> Devontae, That's what they got to do. They got to get out and run and get in the open court. Hey, man. Hey, 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 y'all need to go ahead and chill with all that talking. Y'all need to go ahead with all that. You know what I'm all right, what's up? What's up, Mike? What's up, baby? <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Good uh, to see you. You too. You too. <laughs> oh, come on, man. What about they doing? Over there. About to... oh. <laughs> it's going to be a good game. I already knew that. It's all right. Game, game is about runs. It's about runs. So for all the guys that are out right now, there was a really great question. Um, it was if there was a it was a two on two matchup, who would you pick? Okay. Oh, wow. would you pick? Well, you know what? I'm not even gonna. I'm, I was gonna throw out some choices, but if you can do a two on, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna give you that much. Two on two matchup. Can't so you got to pick two guys from Kansas, two guys from Carolina. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you running with? Wow, um, I would take um, Agbaji uh, and um, Davidson from uh, Kansas and from North Carolina. I would take love, and I don't know who the other guy is that, that I would take. Is this is this current team or is this all time? No, no, no. We're gonna do current. We gotta do current right now. Okay. Yeah, we'll do we'll do current, and then you can do all time. You can you can give me both. I'm going with love and the big guy from North Carolina, back guy. Okay. okay. I ain't taking nobody from North Carolina, so. <laughs> yeah, I feel you on there. I ain't taking nobody from Kansas either. <laughs> hey, can I ask Raymond? You you mentioned this is a game of streets, and we see that all the time. Why is it that way? Well, that's just that's just how basketball goes. You know, basketball is about about runs. You know, teams gonna get hot, teams gonna make a run. You know, one team gonna hit one team in the mouth, the other team is gonna respond. Sometimes, sometimes it don't really happen that way. Sometimes the team gets blown out. But in this case, you know, Kansas is a it's a good team. You know, great program. So you know, we knew we weren't gonna just blow them out. It wasn't just gonna be a blowout game. We knew they was gonna come out the second half ready to play. I just hope my guys can sustain it, you know, and just, you know, fight back and try to find a way to win this game. Can I ask another question? We we have a bunch of guys in the room here who came up really huge in this game at one point or another, whether it's Scotty or Jared or Mike or I'm sure I'm leaving people out. But like what does it take to to do that in a big game? And is it something different than what you bring to a regular game in the middle of the season? I think it's just the confidence, really the confidence in yourself, the confidence that your teammates give you, you know, just putting in that work, you know, for those big time moments like that. You know, if you stay in the gym and work at your game, work at your craft. That sense of social, where does that come from? Did you have it your whole life or did you meet, was it you met Harry Edwards and it sparked something in you or what, how did, because you really lived a life a post-career life that's so exemplary. Well, you know, for me, it 
It all started with Emmett Till. That's what made me uh, conscious of, uh, you know, where I lived and made me concerned about how I would be treated. So I spent my whole life trying to get to the point where uh, I get treated well. Well, I think it's, it's always amazing when you have players, celebrities that use their platform for the greater good, right? I mean, that's why you're you're blessed to be in that position and you continue to be blessed because you use your position for the greater good. Uh, Mike, can you hear yes. Mike? There's a question for you in the chat. Okay. The question is, should more players play in leagues like the big three? It's from Christian. And what do you mean? At, at what age? I guess after retirement. It's a great league. You know, I mean, the they cut the age group down at first. It was for, you know, kind of the older guys. Um, you know, older guys saying my age, you know, came out a little bit, you know, around my time, but has moved into a younger group. And, you know, I think they moved the age group to 21. And, you know, there, there's been a few guys that have came out of there that have gotten – you know, NBA, you know, NBA um, contracts from the big three. So, I mean, it's, it's a, I think it's, it's big already. I mean, it was big and it's going to keep going. I think it's going to grow more teams and Ice Cube's doing a great job with that. And it's opened up doors for guys that, uh, I don't know how many guys have gotten contracts off it, but there's guys that have been, you know, played like Joe Johnson, you know, was around 40 something years old, still got a contract off that. Um, it just shows you that you can still play without having to just, you know, go through a regular league or go through a league like that. You can still, you know, get a contract by playing off that. It's not as easy as people think as either. So, you know, the, the round three, you know, it's very physical games, kind of like the more of the old school game that, um, where, you know, it takes a lot to get a foul in, in that league. So, you know, it's physical and, but it's, it's great competition. It's a great league. Yeah, I got a chance to go to a couple of big three tournaments, and they are very physical. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. And the guys can play just like it's the NBA, too. Yes. It's, it's intense. It's like, it's very, it's very intense. intense. It, it definitely it, is. I mean, you're playing, you're playing for kind of, you're playing for your money. So, you know, you win, you get more money. So. Oh, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot on the line there. Yeah. So, you, you got to win. You're trying to win. So, uh, Mike, you can take this one, or Kareem. Uh, Calvin wants to know, what traits do you look for in college basketball players that will sig signal success for the NBA? I think uh, the, the things that you can look for have to do with uh, a willingness to be coached. And uh, you, you have to get an understanding of the game, how games are won. If you can do that, you got uh, you got a great chance of, of playing and having a long career and uh you know learning the game in a way that uh, will will give you opportunities Mike, would you like to chime in on that question as well i can't go after kareem <laughs> <laughs> well how my answer gonna sound after that what, oh, I, I got another thing uh if i got another thing to say uh you know People have asked me about how did I develop the hook shot? And, you know, I just went to the gym all the time or to my, my uh, grade school gym and uh, worked on it. You know, sometimes I'd be there at, at nighttime and, uh, you know, move the chairs around because it was also our auditorium. But uh, I just worked on the fundamentals of, of the shot that came my signature shot, the hook shot. And, uh, it was able to uh, serve me well throughout my whole career. Kareem, how old were you when you first picked up a basketball and started taking it serious? Uh, I was in the uh, fifth grade when it got serious for me. And um, it was really funny because, you know, if I tried to dribble anything, the kids would take the ball from me. So my grade school coach said, hey, you, you need to learn something. And he got one of the college kids to show me uh, the, the drill that George Mikan used, the, the Mikan drill. And I just started working on that. And that's how I developed my hook shot. Oh, wow. Were you always taller than the other kids? 
Always. I was the biggest baby born in the hospital where I was born. It was, uh, been setting records like that uh, my whole life. <laughs> What, uh, there's a question for you, Jared. Um, Rachel's not able to jump on, but she wanted to know, what was it like living with Corey Kispert right after you beat Gonzaga in the championship? <laughs> it was um, it was a great, great time. Uh, we signed with the same agency, so we were living with each other doing like the pre-draft workouts. And um, for me, I, <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't want to rub it in too much because, like, if I would have lost in the national championship game, I would have been sick. Like, I wouldn't want to talk to anybody. Um, so we had a conversation about it one time. I just like had to rub it in one time, and um, and after that, I was like, all right, I'm gonna give him a break, and we didn't talk about it anymore. But we lived each, with each other for about two months, and uh, it was great. Corey's a great guy. Yeah, that's funny. Jared, look in the chat and, and see who asked, who asked that question. Yeah, Rachel, Rachel asked that question. <laughs> um, Samantha has a question. This is a great one. We'll start with you, Kareem, and then we'll go around and ask all the guys. Okay. If you didn't end up in the NBA, what other career do you think you would have gone towards? That's from Samantha. Mm -hmm. Well, I probably think I would have been like a teacher or a history teacher, because uh, you know English and history were my two subjects in in, uh, in undergrad. So I, I'd probably stick with that. Okay, Mike. What about you? I'd be a I'd be a coach. You know, I've been around basketball my whole life, and you know, basketball is really like that comes you know natural to me to just where I just go out there and and function everything off of basketball. Okay. Jared? Uh, I think for me, I, I would be like an athletic director at like a university, um, something of that nature. That way I'm around sports and um, also not just dealing with basketball, but, you know, football, baseball, whatnot. And, um, and also being a part of like a or big organization, community in college. I think that's something I, I really enjoy. Gotcha. Jake, I know you have a question. So, Jake, if you want to unmute yourself and uh, and jump on and ask your question. There you go. I see you, Jake. There you go. Hi. Uh, I have a question for Kareem. Yeah. What was it like playing with the Lakers? Well, Jake, it was great playing with the Lakers. You know, I got to play with Magic Johnson and James Worthy and Jamal Wilkes, really great players. Bob McAdoo played for us for a while. Um, I think the, the fact that we were able to get dominant players at many different positions gave us an edge and enabled us to, to play our, you know, our fast paced game. Thank you, Jake, for your question. Thanks, Jake. Yeah, hey, well, yeah. Jake, can you go ahead and mute yourself for me? Thank you so much. Uh, Kareem, Billy wanted to ask, um, what NBA player had quickness that rivaled uh, that of the great Bruce Lee? <laughs> Gee, this, it's hard to tell because you know we didn't we didn't do any boxing, but um, the guy that blew me away was uh, Randy Smith. He was the fastest guy I ever encountered. I, I remember there was one time Randy made a steal at half court, and I was just inside the free throw line uh, of the defensive basket, and Randy took off from the from the half from half court to get by me and I could not get back to the basket in time to beat Randy to the basket. Uh, he, he was the fastest guy I ever dealt with. And it, it really made me a lot more cautious, uh, you know, when I was trying to, to play against someone uh, who had that type of uh, speed. Great, great, great stories. Look, you, you've pretty much seen it all, haven't you, Green? 
I've seen most of it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few more questions I'm trying to filter through uh, that we didn't get through earlier. Um, okay, this one is from Ryan. He said his mic isn't working, but he wanted to know, Kareem, what was it like playing at Power Memorial Academy and being a star in New York City as a teenager? He said his father well, went there that year and you were his hero. Well, I'll tell you the the first year, my freshman year was horrible. You know, I got just bumped around and knocked down, and uh, it was very difficult for me to learn that first year. But uh, that experience that I had in ninth grade in the summer between uh, ninth and tenth grade, I I related to that and worked on the uh, parts of the game that uh, I needed to work on. And uh, I made high school All-America my uh, sophomore year, you know, sophomore, junior, and senior year. So it, it's, uh, it takes a while before you get to the point where you have the confidence and the skills to go out there and, and dominate in a game. Um, Jane is on now. Jane wanted to say uh, how awesome it is hearing you speak, Kareem. She says she grew up north of Green Bay, Wisconsin. You are a huge hero of hers, especially when you changed your name. You're a leader of great status in Milwaukee. Well, that's very kind of her to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Kareem, it, how, how does it feel? Because, you know, I know people when they see you, they're in awe of you. I mean, and does it register to you yet? Or are you just like, you know, how, how do you internalize that? Well, you know, I've, um, I've just tried to maintain my humility and not, you know, feel that I'm that special. You know, I'm just lucky to have had uh, some talent and, you know, I put the hard work into Take advantage of it. Okay. Wow. Okay, Calvin wants to know, um, Mike, I'll start with you on this one. He wants to know a funny story. What was a funny memory, the funniest memory from being in the NBA? Funniest memory. Was it a locker room prank? Was it a... The funniest for me was I came into my locker one day and Brad Miller had two ducks that he had just killed hanging from my on the sides of my locker. I went I went nuts on them. <laughs> what? He he just made the kill that morning and brought the ducks to the locker room and hung them up in my locker. Two dead ducks. Why? <laughs> That's what I'm. He knew. He knew how much of a germ freak I am. He knew it bothered me. Oh so my! So he kind of pissed. It kind of pissed me off. Oh my god! Yeah, that's a crazy story. Kareem, do you have any crazy stories? Yeah. Um, there were two guys on our team, Larry Spriggs and Mike McGee, and they used to hang out all the time. They'd go shopping together all the time. And uh, it just worked out that they wore uh, blue shirt, blue silk shirts to a game the same night, the same blue shirt. <laughs> so uh, Larry Spriggs got smacked across his nose and had to go to the hospital. So while he was in the shower, we switched the shirts. <laughs> and uh, he took his he took his to the hospital with him but it was Mike's shirt who, Mike was a lot smaller than him and it, then when Mike tried on Larry's shirt he, he looked like he was swimming in it <laughs> <laughs> and it took him a couple of days before they got it all worked out I love it I love it Raymond you gotta tell us some college memories give us the great the funniest co funniest college story Something that happened in the locker room, something crazy, Raymond. Let us know. We love the crazy without the stories. Oh, man. 
the crazy ones, you know, those those gotta stay locked away in a secret for for life. Oh yeah, yeah, the ones you can tell us. Come on, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can't we can't talk we can't talk about too many of those. But I don't, man, honestly, honestly, I was so focused when I got to college. I wasn't really even like I mean, I really don't have too many crazy stories to be honest with you. I was just so locked in of trying to make it make it to to the next level, you know. So I was just really just all about ball you know i went to class and i stayed in the gym that was about it you know good deal uh, that was about it good deal sorry so, so i'm a little boring i'm sorry about that no, i don't no, have no, no funny no, no, have no funny stories we know some of your stories you have to keep you know you gotta take them to the grave we definitely understand yeah yeah i'll be i'll be, I'll be breaking the code yeah, yeah, I'll be breaking the code. I can't do that. <laughs> All right, Scotty, we're not gonna ask you to break the code, but tell us one of your crazy locker room stories back in Arkansas. Crazy locker room. I'm kind of like <clears throat> I'm like Raymond. I can't I can't take you in the locker room, but, <laughs> but I, I, I guess the crazy story would probably be uh, there was a time we, we won the um, the Honolulu Classic that they used to have back. <clears throat> it's called the Rainbow Classic back in Honolulu. Uh, when I was in college, and you know, we played in that, we were fortunate enough to win that. We beat Oklahoma, I think, in the final. And when we came back, uh, we got back to Fayetteville, and you know, there were some guys on the team that were, you know, convincing me to talk to coach about not having practice the next day and maybe making it up and going two days or two practices in place of that. So, you know, Coach Richardson, for those of you who you know don't know him, he's not the easiest to approach about you know making those type of suggestions. So. You know, I had the nerve to do it. So I went up and had a conversation with him and he agreed. He was like, okay, I'll give you guys a day off and then we're going to go ahead and, and practice twice the following day. Well, we made that agreement with me not knowing that, you know, one of my teammates had a Christmas party planned. <laughs> so he has a Christmas party and we go to the party where we come back, we practice, you know, those next two times and then we go off, we go to play Ole Miss. At the time, we were fortunate enough to be ranked, you know, number one in the country. When we go to Ole Miss, we get beat. We get beat. Coach finds out about the party, which is really about five or six days, you know, past. And he came in to practice and he started asking questions about who all went to the party and certain guys would admit it, certain guys wouldn't. Well, he ran all of us. And, you know, he ran us so hard that for me, that was like the toughest condition that I'd ever gone through. And I was like, man, you know, we got to come clean. So we all came clean, but needless to say, we went on to have a, have a good year, but it was just a crazy thing to not know that I was being set up <laughs> to, you know, have a party versus, you know, having practice. But it was a learning experience for me, uh, but it was also was a learning experience for the rest of the team because we got our, our butts ran to death. Look, that was a fun party. Sounds like a fun party. It wasn't fun enough. It wasn't enough fun to, to, to deal with what we deal with. Makes sense. Makes sense. Well, we have a question. Christian, if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself, you know, the NIL, the, the new, the changes in the NIL rules are a hot topic. Christian had a question about that. Christian, if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah. Hi. Uh, this is just like to all the former players, you know, whether recent or back in further eras, um, just what are your thoughts about the ability for college players to capitalize on their own names and be able to make a little bit of money while they're in college? You know, not everyone's a superstar. Never, not everyone's going to make an NBA contract, but, you know, just be able to make a little bit while they're in college or even make a lot while they're in college. And, you know, uh, you know, you could be talking about a guy like Colin Gillespie who, you know, might not have an NBA future, but he's been in college for six years. So, you know, what, what are your thoughts about the, the status of that, you know, how that might change the game in the future and, you know, um, you know, is is it a net positive or a net negative overall for college basketball? Any of the guys want to jump in? Y'all all have the college experience. I, I think it's a net positive. Um, me just being just getting right out of college and and seeing like um, some of my teammates who are still in college benefiting from it. I think it's a I mean, I, I know there's some rebuttals to it, but I think it's a great opportunity. And like you said, there's some guys that stay in college and not might might not make it to the NBA and still get a chance to uh, make some money. So I think it's because like you work hard in the in the in the college 
social scene and uh, you know just in school like you work you work extremely hard and and um and i think the people who are benefited the most of it weren't the people who were putting in the most work so i think um i, I think it's pretty fair in my opinion it's about I, time that's my answer i think that uh the college players should should get some compensation it's not like you have to uh, make them rich but they should get some compensation so that maybe they can pay for their apartment and buy a car and take somebody out to dinner every now and then it, it shouldn't be um uh something where they they hit it rich but they should be compensated because they sacrifice a lot. All right, Kareem, Teresa's asking the big question. We have less than two minutes left. Thoughts on the game? Who's going to take it home? Well, I'm I'm still going to go uh, with uh, North Carolina. They seem to be uh, playing the better defense. So I'm going to go with them. Definitely a, a, a close one. Definitely, definitely a close one. Trying to get some last minute questions. Plus we have one more uh, Academy trivia question worth $250 that we're going to be giving away momentarily. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to jump in and just ask that question before we wrap up here because um, time is going by really fast. All right, put your answer in the chat. We have less than a minute left. The father of what other player on our hang today was a consensus All-American on the same team with Bill Walton in the 1971-72 season. $250 Academy Sports and Outdoors gift card on the line. First person to put the answer in the chat correctly wins. Um, I'll give you some multiple choice. A, Mike Bibby, B, Jared Butler, or C, Scotty Thurman. I like my All right, I think we, we got Raymond. 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 <laughs> Raymond. Okay. Raymond, so do you give it to Massimo? I see you, but you just already won a gift card. So I gotta go to the next one, okay? So Raymond, you were the next guy with the correct answer. The correct answer is Mike Bibby. Um, Bill Walton and Mike's dad, Free Bibby, were both All Americans. So, do you give it? Do you keep the gift card, Raymond, or are you going to give it to Samantha? Two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, you're muted. I'm gonna give it to Samantha. Oh, y'all clapping up for him being a gentleman. <laughs> Better than me, two hundred and fifty dollars. I would have kept it. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. That is so awesome. You guys, please do not forget Thank coming you. up. Thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations, Samantha. Thank you. What are you gonna do with all that money, girl? Two hundred and fifty dollars to spend at Academy. I guess go to Disneyland. That's what they said in the '90s, right? Disney World. <laughs> Well, there is a tile below where you can get all your collegiate gear at Academy Sports Shop. Make sure you look it up. Get all your favorite gear from your favorite team. Also, I want to remind everybody coming up on June 2nd, game one of the NBA Finals, we will be hosting another hang. Bill Walton will be here. So you want to make sure you get registered. We have a floating tile above where you can actually get registered now before that link goes live. So lock in your tile. Oh, How many seconds left? Gotta watch. Ooh. So Kansas has scored four points on the sky hook, sort of sky, modified <laughs> sky hook. It wasn't quite it's a the jump same. hook. It was sort of a. What would you call that? Jump hook. Jump hook. Oh wow! Oh wow! This yeah. is this is one of the best finals games. Bang! Right. This Whoa! Great game. Looks like the Jayhawks. Wow. Kareem, you did it with a lot more style. That I, tell you that. I think I think uh, the Jayhawks uh, have made the uh, have made it to in, into the into the winner circle, and you can see them. They're going crazy. <laughs> 
down there in New Orleans. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And Kareem, you know, your friend Bill is right there in the mix of it all. He said that the energy in New Orleans is unbelievable. Yeah. Kansas was too deep. They're too deep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, boy. fellas, we want to thank everybody for joining us, joining us today. Thank you so much for hanging. You all are so amazing. Um, you have really, really great stories. We appreciate your time. You could be anywhere in the world, but guess what? You are hanging with us, which is so dope. It was, it was great, hang, it was great hanging live with you guys. I hope we do it again. Kareem, have a great time at your 75th birthday party. Thank you. And we hope you have an amazing time. To all the fellas, you guys are stars in our eyes, always. We're very appreciative of everybody. Don't forget, you guys, we have an NFT store. We have some amazing moments today on Hang, so go check out the Hang NFT store at opensea.io forward slash let Hang live. I know we have about four more seconds. Maybe somebody will hit a three-pointer. Oh, Make sure you guys join us June 2nd, game one, NBA Finals on Hang. How are you, Raymond? What? Yeah, man, it's just it's the tough, man. My big my big fella went down and hurt. My big boy went down and hurt us. Ah, uh, yeah. The the injury to Baycott might might be uh, the crucial yes, the crucial event in this game. Yes, sir. That's what hurt us. Yes, sir. Kareem, oh, did you, Kareem, did you enjoy hanging? It was it was great hanging with you guys. I hope I get a chance to do it again. We can't wait. You have a blank check anytime. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'll be back. Thank I you. I need to work. <laughs> Woo. Thanks to everybody for taking some time to answer my questions. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Christian. And thank you to all the fans that always jump on, ask your questions, always interact. Things are not possible without you guys. So we're definitely to say congratulations to the Jayhawks. Okay. Ready? And I gotta, I gotta give congratulations to the Jayhawks. And uh, he just stepped out of bounds. Yeah. Oh. oh. Twice. They get to uh, review it, right? They should. Yeah, they're reviewing they that. That's gonna be Kansas ball right there. Oh boy. Oh, Carolina ball. North Carolina ball. Yeah. Get us a three. Oh my gosh. Dang. They need to stop turning in there. <laughs> yeah. Raymond, there's oh. the yeah, it's so Thurman good. time. Wow, he's out. Oh yeah, he stepped out twice. Hey, thank you guys. I had a great time. I really Raymond, you gotta it. hang out here. They they can't. Oh, I, I ain't going nowhere. You I ain't going nowhere. I'm staying right here. Oh my gosh. Oh, they gave it to okay. Oh. He was out right there. Yeah. That's right. four point one. Raymond, would would Roy Williams come up with the play that, that ties it here in this situation? Oh, he will come up with something. That's for sure. It's all about it's all about who gonna hit the shot. <laughs> Is he good? Got a question for, for all the yeah, players in here. Is he if, if Carolina gets the ball down three, do you think the team up by three should foul in a situation like this so they can hit a three? Uh, that's tricky, man. That's tricky. In, that's tricky in situations like that. You just don't know. If they get that ball in the shooting position, you're in trouble. That's three free throws, man. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta hit it. You gotta hit that. You gotta hit the three, or you gotta get fouled trying the three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you gonna get the ball to? Uh, just, just, just looking at this game. Yes. I'm going. Manic, Manic, they know they're gonna probably try to go to him. That's our best three point shooter. So they know we're gonna try to go to that kid. I'm going to, I want RJ Davis to take that shot. Caleb Love been struggling a little bit tonight. So I want to get a last shot to RJ. They got 4.3. They gave him 4.3 seconds. So we got a chance to yeah. get a good, a good play. A chance to get a good play together. Yeah, they can they can run a good play and, and get a, a, a decent shot and tie the game and send it into overtime. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Oh, wow, this is tense. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So, Raymond. Yeah. You're in a position like this. What are you thinking on the sideline? You're one of the five guys going in. Are you freaking out or are you trying to keep your composure? I'm trying to keep my composure, especially being a point guard. You, you definitely got to keep your composure, you know. But I'm also I'm also one of those guys. Listen, I'm telling coach, look, let let me let me take this shot, do or die. I want it. Oh, you want that pressure? Yeah, yeah, I want that shot. I want that shot. I want that shot. Yeah, just That's, like Scotty, just like Scotty did, right? <laughs> I was just gonna say, Scotty said that in the last hang we did for the yes. SEC championship. You guys all want the ball there. Yes, That's sir. the difference between you guys and me. <laughs> 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 it's like, no, please, no. I'm with you, Scott. I'm like, I'll just, I'll cheer really loud on the bench. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I, I would kick it out of bounds or something for sure. That John in like six inches, maybe or. Yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't that. I, I could have been Kareem's height. I still wouldn't. Be. North, North Carolina is going to have to get the ball though in in the front court for a decent shot. Yeah. This is his whole season, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Let's see what he grew up. I think I think I'm about to y'all 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 a little ahead of me. Y'all seeing stuff before me. I'm about to oh. take this off my ear. Ah. Me too. Me too. Me too. I'm like I don't want y'all to ruin it for me. The Jayhawks. Oh man! Congratulations, Jayhawks. Oh, they lost. They 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 seen it before me. That was a great fight. That was a great fight. Great game. Great game though. You know, it's closely contested. <laughs> Don't know what would have happened if Baycott hadn't gotten hurt. Yeah, it'd have been it'd have been different for sure. Ah man, that sucks. Thank you again, uh, fans. We appreciate it. Raymond, Devontae, Mike, Scotty. My pleasure. Kareem, Thank you. Thank you. My Thanks for having me. Thank you all so much. It was amazing hanging with each of you, y'all are amazing. See y'all next time. Thank you so much.